is made up of numbers. So I hope everybody gets that. That is radionics 101 that you have to understand. Uh, that then would represent water. So if you wanted to send water to this person, you take a person's picture here. You, you, um, you would then dial in the water number. You could even put a little water here if you want. Not really needed because now it's a symbol and water energy would be sent to this person. That's basically radionics in a nutshell. And you can pick whatever energy you want to send to them. Protection, prosperity, um, etc. Now, there's one other aspect of all this, which I'm converting over to as well, and that's called electronic homeopathy. Now, homeopathy, I believe it was 1789 that this one person um, um, came up with this concept of vibrational energies and using the vibrational energies. Uh, these, these go way far back, though. This person just kind of put it together. I believe it's Hahnemann or whatever his name is. Hunky dog. And... Um, came up with the fact that if you take something um, and turn it into pure vibrations, you can then um, give minute amounts that you can give the only the informational energetic field to that person, usually in the form of a uh, charged water or a sugar tablet that had the vibration in it. Not, nothing physical is there. But you can use things that really upset the body, meaning you can give somebody a poison, but there's no poison in it. So it's just a vibration. So your body recognizes that and say, and fights against it, kicking in your immune system. But there is no poison in it. The stronger the homeopathic preparation, the less, quote, physical there's in it, which is virtually no physicality in it. Out. You're getting into vibrations. So electric homeopathy, and homeopathy is um, legal uh, to help people with. Again, you can't practice medicine. You can't make any kind of claims, etc. And I don't think doctors should either, because, you know, the, the graveyards are full of their experiments and their promises. And not only is the graveyards full, those graveyards have people in them that have no money left. They're probably in debt. Uh, from their poisons that they not only don't heal you, they put you in the ultimate death debt. <laughs> what a joke. So, but there's a place for practical medicine as well. Antibiotics and regular medications out there, particularly the ones, the older ones, have saved billions of lives, including myself. Now, it's ridiculous not to use these and uh, for uh, uh, life-saving situations. So, uh, and most things can't replace that. And of course, since nothing is legal, there's no research going on on how to do this, and there's no money in it, so why do it? Because after all, uh, we live by the satanic principle of money, money, money. So, um, we've got to understand that as, as the bigger picture. So that's what the bigger picture is all about, and we have to be very clear of that. So electronic, it's not really electronic. Again, it's uh, soul force energy fields, um, is what makes up the homeopathic energies and where you can use this type of technology uh, to then send the energy to somebody else. The famous uh, ray machines who had a particular uh, type of uh, sigil he would use, um, these little marks in, a, uh, in circles that he would use uh, to then send a particular type of homeopathic energy to a particular target, whatever that may be. These were generally used uh, for um, quasi-healing purposes. Again, nobody's practicing medicine, and this is not medicine. Homeopathy is an energetic reality. Um, most people, or I should say the scientific community, led by Bugs Bunny, um basically rejects all this. But what isn't rejected by the people that have all the gold that don't want to share it? Uh, it's foolish not to do proper research. But thanks to the unamazing deviant criminal, James Randi of the Goofball Association of Theatrical Magicians, otherwise known as people who are tricksters, who lie and cheat you, take your money and then say, oh, it was just a joke. <laughs> didn't you enjoy it? I'm glad you paid me $200 to see that. Penn and Teller show. Yeah, yeah. It's all just a lie. And you believed it. <laughs> what a sucker you are. So that's what a theatrical magician does because it's all illusion. And because it's done well, it's impressive. It's fun. 
But what happened? We all want to see that in life. The point is, is that that's not, it's trickery. It has nothing else to that. And you, in the end, pay the ultimate price of getting nothing and being tricked and paying a lot of money for it. So the unamazing Randy and his idiot organization uh, that never was going to ever pay anything uh, started to, were self-appointed as people who test homeopathy, uh, magicians, psychics, etc. So, and of course, this is no conflict of interest that the person who was supposed to give you a million dollars was also the person that tests you. That's real amazing Randy science. Uh, so you're very prejudiced. Uh, you have to give up a lot of money uh, and you're going to run the show. Hmm, sounds like a casino to me. But you're going to have better odds in the casinos than you're going to have with there. So, I mean, how would you ever come out with a positive, especially when you're so negative? So you have to have third parties to train people. But he know he knew that all of this stuff was real. And as such, he would never let a third party handle it. He handled it himself. So, and of course, his organization was filled with uh, military officers and other types of people, corporation uh, people, all very corrupt people uh, that made sure that there, uh, anything in this area that would free mankind uh, would be stomped on. So, he also himself uh, committed crimes by bringing in his uh, lover, uh, who he actually... Um, um, got into the country uh, illegally uh, from South America um, to assist him. So the whole idea is that um, this is something that we have to be very cognizant of what happens. A very, very corrupt person, uh, a person of uh, very low morals. Um, his whole story is kind of strange. Um, and of course, uh, helping somebody to illegally immigrant, who was his uh, lover, uh, his male lover, uh, certainly is a crime which he was convicted of uh, to begin with. Uh, of course, that is understandable uh, coming from a hostile country where uh, homosexuals were persecuted and possibly even murdered. But, you know, uh, nobody really cares about the facts. Uh, any type of thing, it's illegal, it's illegal, you go to prison. So, uh, there's supposed to be justice, and where is that? But the bottom line is that uh, this guy came along and he gave a test to homeopathy which has been verified by other people that there's some sort of energy here. But he came along and said, well, there isn't. And they did some tests and they couldn't find it because you can't find uh, a subtle force energy uh, is not measurable by common science. So what happened is that the common science of it all um, found out that this was there was nothing there. It's like there's nothing anywhere, is there? All science have said this there. You know, let's bleed the person. You've got, you know, all sorts of things there, etc. Uh, that goes on. So it's just, you know, it's the same old stupid stuff we get. Um, someone else came after that study and verified the fact, yes, there is something there. So again, you know, science is so variable and it depends upon the individual, the kind of test you're doing, etc. That, you know, you can't really verify anything. So, you know, everything is corrupt. Uh, universities are paid by corporations to come up with answers that they want. And if you don't do that, your funding is removed. So what do you do? Oh, yeah, well, the peanut's good for everything. Yeah, uh, It's growing my hair now. I just need another $300 million to do more research on the peanut for you. But we, we found stuff. So the whole idea is this is the kind of reality that we live in and something that is pretty frightening in the bigger picture when you really understand it. And after 55 years of research... Uh, that I've been doing in these areas, uh, we have really, you, know, you got to understand all this. So, so the whole idea is that uh, this is a part of the problem that comes out there. So basically electronic homeopathy, which is what these technically machines are, they're not, radionics, as I said, is a misnomer. It's hooked up to Ruth Drown and her illegal practices of medicine without a license, even though she was a chiropractor. And most of these people were, you know, they got you on federal laws uh, because you couldn't do anything intrastate. But she, even after being arrested, went on for another 15 years in her practice without much problems, from what I understand. All of this is difficult to find. Well, what is the true story there? What actually happened? Um, people uh, and what go. We, we just don't know what's going on with any of these people in the bigger picture because it's all shrouded in corruption.
So she was also a um, chiropractor in uh, the Los Angeles area, known particularly at those kind of times and right up even to modern days for a high level of corruption. So we just don't really, uh, aren't they all <laughs> the cities? Uh, but people look at Chicago, but L.A. is probably worse than Chicago ever was. So uh, when we look at all these things, um, we have to understand that as well. So what exactly is going on there? So we've got to keep that in mind. So um, so this is, of course, where everything's going. So electric homeopathy and the use of homeopathic preparations, which are pure energy, all fit together perfectly and then serve that fact of working on the informational energetic fields uh, that you're using for, quote, well-being. Uh, so, and of course, there are homeopathic preparations you can get everywhere. There's even homeopathic pharmacies. Uh, there's a big one in Los Angeles, and I'm sure they're all over the country. And certainly you can get these online with no problem whatsoever. It is not illegal. Uh, homeopathy was legalized uh, by a judge who ruled on it in the San Francisco area of California. I don't know when that was, but it was many, many years ago. It may have been the 40s, the 20s, I'm not sure. So it is a legal practice. But like everything, whether you're, no matter what you're doing, you cannot practice medicine without a license, make claims, etc. Um, so uh, it's one of those gray areas which is legal. And electric homeopathy, which is what these type of machines are, they're not even electric. They're uh, I, Again, there's, there's proper terminology that we have to start using so everyone knows this and stays within the proper realm. I don't think that anybody, again, should make any kind of claims, period, particularly doctors as well. So this is, uh, and there is a place for modern medicine I've mentioned as well. And anybody who doesn't use certain modern medications to uh, relieve the problems of the symptoms, whether that's asthma or other things, is plain crazy because you will die. And there's practical, and the problem is, is that uh, the medical industry and medications are for the um, symptoms. It's not for the cure, it's for the symptoms. So that's how it's legally defined. This is for the symptoms, they're treating the symptoms, and this is where we've made the big error. But there's an appropriate place for everything. Um, yet we have to be very careful, just like we have to be careful of a bunch of people stating stuff uh, that actually has no basis either. Uh, the snake oil salesman of the past... Um, could be the snake oil salesman of the present. If they're going to tell you that you're going to take a machine like this and you're going to be uh, have some miraculous results. Uh, these are very user dependent. We don't know what they can do because nobody has done anything in those areas. And the only person who's done any research in radionics has been myself, who's been doing it for the last approximately 40 years. Uh, well, I've been in research for about 55 years. I wasn't using radionics until... 35 years ago, maybe. It's hard to pin down the exact time uh, when I started making this machine um, and so forth. Now, here's another machine over here, this right here, which uh, has been made. One of the upgrades, a smaller compact one, some nine dials, um, but it's the same setup. But, you know, very, very well made. We actually plated these with gold for better transfer of energy, um, gold fill wire inside, all the types of things that we actually uh, are using today um, to build these types of shape. But we've moved away from all of that into a much higher degree of understanding and uh, wiring. So, to keep all this in mind is very, very important in the entire process. So, uh, but that's uh, where everything is moving. Now, can you tune these dials if you practice? Everybody can become very competent. You know, to become an expert, uh, anybody who's seriously interested in a subject matter can become an expert, basically. You can do something really well. Uh, to become a master is a lifetime of study, and you have to study under the right people. You have to, again, spend your lifetime doing it. To become an expert probably take you anywhere from uh, about 10 years. Uh, it's been thought to know anything uh, of, of recent. It's been stated that to really know anything to a high level, it takes seven years. Um, and that's right. Now, that doesn't mean you can't use units. It just means if you want to become an expert, it takes about 10 years uh, to do that, to learn radionics properly. And that means using it, reading it, etc. It takes time to learn everything. There's a lot to learn 
and most of it is about digesting it. So, uh, and how much of that, you know, just like food, how much of that food you ate did you digest and take the nutrients out of it? And you really, that's the key. It's not what you eat, it's what you absorb. So you can take all the best supplements in the world. Most of them are junk because you don't absorb them. And you go through all the reality of it. So it takes 10 years to absorb this too. But in the meantime, you can be pretty proficient at the use of this. Oh, probably if you concentrate on it within six months to a year, uh, depending on your um, ability to douse and sense. But you also just have to learn how all this stuff works. And you're going to have to go to an expert. And there isn't very many people out there. Pretty much I'm the only one you're going to be able to communicate with, get information, have questions about dialing and everything else. You, you, most people are not going to. They sell you an instrument. That if, they're, if you're lucky, you get some sort of training and you're left on your own. And these instruments are pretty inferior junk because they don't understand how it all works. So it is a skill. And it is not something that anybody can just jump into and get fantastic results from initially. Do you understand the process? Uh, it's miraculous that any of this works, that you can actually send a prosperity field to somebody so that they start making more money by using some sort of non-physical informational energetic field uh, that creates this in their life, that protects them, that keeps them in a high state of whatever, that brings them wisdom. Quite amazing. And these are all informational energetic fields uh, that are out there. And you can reproduce these and send it to a person with a great variance of results. So uh, things depend on your own channels. Well, how can you bring money to you? Well, I thought a bucket of money would be in front of my door, Dr. Thor. I I tune in that on my machine. Well, it doesn't work that way. So I wish it did. That's magic lamp thinking, and you have to understand what is magic lamp thinking and what is the real reality of using this amazing technology that almost does that. And everybody who's high-level producers are doing this on a subconscious level. And of course, you know, very few people understand the people who are the, you know, the most wealthiest people in the world um, are pretty dumb people and they're not producing what you think. The richest man in China, which I just saw a little special on him uh, last night. What do you think his product was? No, uh, some electronic thing, Dr. Toy. I must have invented something pretty cool. Uh, assembled in some factory with all the slaves there. Well, no. Water. Everybody wants pure water and he sells high level pure water. And he's the richest man in the world because that's the product that was in. Nobody needs a cell phone. Everybody needs a glass of water. Well, it's very interesting. But if you look at all the American millionaires there and billionaires, uh, Bill Gates, this high school, he's a high school graduate, by the way, never completed college, uh, didn't even really go for more than uh, a few months. Uh, Steve Jobs, another guy, never went to college, never did much of anything, went to India and took it to mushrooms. And so I think great things for me. But he was able to use his informational energetic success fields to influence other people, just like Bill Gates, etc. But Bill Gates hasn't had a decent idea in his entire life. He's a very low thinker, uh, very, pretty much coming from his low background, his um, uh, really unintelligible reality that he comes from. So if we go through all these people, we even go to Bezos, Mr. Amazon. Well, Mr. Amazon used typical robber baron business practices to take over an industry that still is quasi-successful. Uh, the bottom line is, is that, um, yes, he did go to traditional college. His parents were very wealthy and he has advanced degrees. Uh, I'm not sure if they're business or whatever they're in. Um, so the whole idea is that... Um, I'm not, I don't think they were, but he did the classic thing. You go in and you undercut your competition. You sell at a loss, grab the market because everybody comes to you, and then you raise prices. And he's notorious for this as uh, we see all the membership skyrocket and the higher cost of grabbing people and then getting them hooked and then raising the prices. Uh, he was able to do that because of his financial background where he put he invested in Amazon or Amazon uh, stockholders paid six billion dollars in losses so he could establish the market now whether that's worth it or not uh, probably it is in the bigger picture but um, uh, we have to understand that as well that we don't really have that kind of reality so um 
So there's certainly no geniuses here. He didn't do something incredibly new or different. Amazon is just the Sears catalog put online. Plain and simple. Anybody who's uh, who goes back and understands Sears and their catalog stores, which had catalogs with, I don't know, it could have been at least a million products in there, huge catalog books. And this is what people would do all over the United States, particularly those people that were on farms and other things, could order from a catalog. They would go back to that store and pick it up. The only thing different now is it's brought to your door. So uh, Sears lost out because they couldn't keep up with the new technology. So they were stomped on by people with using their ideas and doing it. So uh, there's certainly nothing genius there. Do you think that's genius of what Bezos did, selling books at uh, cheap prices, putting all the bookstores? Because apparently, even though I still can't find anybody that reads, uh, this is a big market. And then, of course, expanded from there. And then, of course, expanded, again, some smart moves. You know, we're going to put in stores there where we don't have to stock anything. We're going to find out what sells and then we're going to sell what the stores sell and get rid of them. This is kind of the very uh, boring, unimaginative principles behind Amazon. So if you think there's any genius going on, there isn't. And most of these people have no uh, education whatsoever. Richard Branson, again, a guy who's uneducated and really kind of semi-retarded, um, has been able to build an empire uh, because of his attraction energies to him. And of course, you connect to good people. If you have enough money, people will want to work for you because you're going to pay them a lot of money. Uh, so these are all the things that help in the bigger process that we all need to look into. But radionics is something that you're going to have to work with. Now, again, I'm making things as uh, pretty much as instantaneous. And I'll be showing these things uh, fairly soon here, as instantaneous as we possibly can. Uh, with um, and simplistic without having to be too skillful. But remember, the ultimate ingredient in radionics is the consciousness of the user and the programmer. So you have to have the proper energies, and then you have to then use your consciousness to connect it to a particular target. Now, if you're a low consciousness person, if that boggles your mind, if you're caught up in some stupid belief systems, well, this is all going to cause you to fail. And causing you to fail is all part of the reality of it. And uh, uh, you have to, this is a technology based on consciousness and it works for those people that it should work. So if you're like the industry, which is today taken over by entirely by Satanists, your results that you're going to get are going to be pretty poor. They build junk. They don't know what they're doing. They're copy people, and uh, they don't really get it. So this is another problem with the radionic industry. The entire industry is corrupt. It's been taken over by Satanists. There's government agents. There are people who claim they're Christians and healers. All of these people are very evil scumbuckets who are ruining this industry. Uh, but, you know, I'm not sure that should be surprising to anyone. Uh, anything of potency and power is always perverted, uh, always regulated and put out of business. That's the way the world works, and you should expect that. And it's almost the fact that if this was something that sort along and nobody tried to uh, put blockades in front of you, you have to scratch your head and say, well, why is that? I'm probably not doing the right stuff. But the more you're harassed, the more problems there are, the more that the big pharma and the governments uh, that they own come to cause problems, uh, then you are probably on the right path. So it's as simple as that. So don't think that this is just anybody can do it. We are putting that together, uh, which will be almost to that point. No training, nothing. You use a particular disc that has the energy in it. You then use a small amount of your own consciousness to connect to the particular target, and you're done. There's no dialing or anything else. There's nothing in these boxes, people. People don't seem to understand that. There's absolutely nothing in there. And even if electricity was going through here, what is electricity? What, 60 hertz? So 60 hertz, which is AC current going through there, or these would probably be DC, whatever that voltage would be, 6 volts, 12 volts, whatever it is. What What is that? So you got 6 volts of electricity, or even uh, most products run today on 5 volts. Your computers, most of your devices go into batteries. They charge batteries, which then power the unit through DC, direct current, instead of AC, which is alternating current, which you generally don't use on small devices. That's why batteries are different than regular current, even though you use regular AC to charge the batteries. But the batteries then take over in direct current. Now, the bottom line is that 
Um, so what? So direct current's going through here. Or let's, ooh, fancy. AC's going through here. 60 hertz, 120 volts. So? Well, you could, you could rig up a device, and there were electrical devices at the turn of the century where they just gave you electrical shocks, and they're supposed to cure everything. How is that manifesting anything? No, it isn't. So people have to understand that. And something that I don't think anybody gets is I tell people there's nothing in radionic machines and not a single one of them. And I have most of the radionic machines made. All the, the computerized crap that makes no sense. They're a hot mess. This is on uh, my uh, channel on YouTube. You can see what's inside. It's all junk. It makes no sense whatsoever. And people who like Hieronymus, well, there's nothing to it. He's tuning non-electrical energies through to variable tunable capacitors. That's it. The rest of it's just a mishmash of um, pseudo-electronics that really don't do much of anything. So, um, some amplifiers, etc., but usually these are poor uh, amplifiers that don't understand or can hold the energy unlike. So that's very important is what we do. We do use electronics in our machines and so forth, but the electronic has uh, the electronics have been converted to work at a particular level to handle this special type of homeopathic energy flows, which is the best way to describe them, um, to use that energy through regular or semi-regular electronics. I only use tube amplification uh, in my machines because they are not standard electrical amplification or solid states. Tubes work off a of residence, which you could call homeopathic type energies, which they're able to pick up. But that's not good enough. The circuit itself has to be changed at an energetic level. Then when that's changed, it feeds into another transmitter that's changed at an energetic level. And of course, the energy is taken from the main unit and then moved over uh, to them, as you can see right up here. Here's your main kind of amplifier unit, which is changed at the subatomic level. And then it goes into a transmitter. Where's my transmitter? Oh, here it is. Um, like this with the antenna on it. So that's the key to it all. That's how it works. Uh, it sounds simplistic, but as a person who has studied this for over 50 years, uh, the intricacies and what you have to do correctly is super advanced technology. And don't let the simplicity fool you. And uh, the bottom line is that I'm the only one that knows how this works and can make it work. No, everybody else is still, oh, I'm, I'm going to copy Abrams from 1920. Uh, I'm going to use crap energy and... Uh, um, but from the 1930s, uh, and that doesn't match at all and try and move it in there like Orgone uh, from Wilhelm Reich. It's just ridiculous. Um, certainly Reich is interesting, but it's apples and oranges again. So uh, those energies, uh, the accumulation of energies from the atmosphere, which is highly toxic, is about the worst thing you can possibly do. So all of that uh, is uh, the reality of what's going on. Now, can you do this? Well, if you get the proper equipment, it's very easy. And you will get results. Now, what are those results? Well, it depends on your life. So, and it depends on your consciousness realities, which is a form of, of filtering and stopping the real evil people from getting this technology. Because if you really don't have the higher consciousness energies, you're not going to get those higher consciousness results. So you have to be very careful. You have to be very careful to the extent that um, whom you're buying from, what are their technologies, just a funny looking box that you think is good, who's basically been imitating me as so many people have done out there, um, and even have the nerve to show my boxes in the back saying that their crap stuff is any good. Well, you're getting in with a bunch of very evil, delusional people uh, who have no idea uh, what they're doing. Now, the basic psychic process of it, of tuning dials and focusing on a person, works for pretty much everybody to a certain level. But, you know, it's kindergarten. You know, the bottom line is it's still kindergarten effects, but kindergarten is still a place you have to start. But that is very low level, and most people don't want kindergarten results. They want uh, doctorate degree results. They want advanced uh, realities out there. And the problem is, is this is an entire field where nobody really knows anything. There are no trainings except what I give of any extent. Even my courses haven't, aren't even out there yet. Um, even the new technology I have is not out there. 
So all of this is coming together in the next few months, and everybody else is just producing old, junky stuff. Uh, they still got all the stupid dials on them. They're still in their little plastic boxes, whether they're uh, 50 bucks or, you know, tens of thousands. It's all the same junk. People put a tiny little computer on the top of it and have one dial and say this is advanced. Well, it's arduous. And the manufacturer of the SE5 says it takes like 40, 50 minutes to do an analyzing. Well, that's technology? Really? Uh, we have other people that are working on technologies that are literally 80 to 100 years old, which is Hieronymus. Now, Hieronymus stuff is old. There's no updates to any of it. Nothing has been done. It's ridiculous. Then you have people that want to make things out of shoe boxes and wear funny hats and all the things that go with it uh, that are intrinsically nothing more than Satanists. And again, all the Satanists have converted over to using radionic machines because they're so lazy they don't do rituals anymore. Uh, led by a person who doesn't know anything whatsoever about the field uh, at all. So all of this is part and parcel of what's going on in the bigger picture out there uh, that we have to be very cognizant of, of this particular mysterious, strange, and perverted industry. Uh, so, um, so it's a very uh, mind field to walk through. But if you're watching this, you have found the source and the expert on the planet or probably the universe, if there's anything similar of this use, uh, that is out there. And there are no other experts. They're all delusional, Satanist, corrupt government agents. All this stuff is out there. And of course, that's, isn't that everything in this world, though? So the whole idea, if you're fortunate enough to be listening to this right now, you've found the source. And if you stay with this organization of my technology, uh, your life will prosper. Uh, you will succeed or empower just about anything you want in life. And your life will radically change for the better. This is not something that just happens because you flick a switch. This doesn't really mean anything. So it's going to take a consciousness level that you have to produce as well. This is the screen. You have to do that. You have to understand this. And it's going to take, to a certain extent, you have to at least understand the processes going on. Now, if you want to become a master, you have to learn all of the uh, training programs that I'm coming out with. That's what a, becoming a master is all about. If you want to become a fairly decent expert, well, you just follow the training tools, use the equipment, and you'll become an expert over time. So master level things are for a particular type of people that want to reach that high level, but it's going to take a lot of study, and it's going to take a lot of work and investment in technologies, etc. But who wants to do that? Uh, you want When you go and you buy a car, you want to make sure that car is well made, that it works, and it does its job. You really want to learn how to fix it? Well, no, if it breaks, you go to the expert. So the bottom line is that uh, masters are a whole nother degree, and that's really not what most people should be striving for. It's way too difficult. Uh, but you, there's no reason why you can't be very proficient and get the results that you're seeking. And there's many variances and everything else. And as I said, it depends a lot on your, you know, if you're on a person that has access to higher levels of uh prosperity. Well, I mean, you can't go from uh, living in a tent somewhere to living in a mansion. And if you're a low-level executive, you can work yourself up to a high level, but it goes through the process and you have to have those channels where it can come to you. You want lots of money? Well, how's the money going to come to you? Well, you know, I've dealt with people for 20, 30 years about this. And the point is to a lot of people, it comes down, well, I want to win at gambling. Well, you can make yourself luckier, win more often. If you gamble a lot and you win three times a month, well, you probably can win five or six times a month. That should be quite an increase in profits. You can't make yourself win. These are games of chance. They're very random. It's very difficult. And so the whole idea is what you're doing is forming a lucky energy field around you that you get all the breaks. Maybe you get that special card you're needing at that particular time. You pick the right slot machine, whatever it may be. Uh, but that's pretty random. Trying to control the lottery and other things, which we've tried for years, generally doesn't work. It's too random. And of course, it's set up to be extremely difficult. Even though, again, in all these areas, there are certain people working that claim they have done certain things and working on finance only using remote viewing and other things. So, and which is very interesting, and I haven't had a chance really to investigate these people um, further, but they claim to have lots and lots of results. And all of the smart psychics and everything else that are out there, the people who really figure out this world, uh, tend to be in an organization like that that is taking their already developed skills and making money with it.
and they'll even finance you to do it. So there is this aspect going on and there are organizations doing that. We hope to do that in the future as well. Um, and of course, uh, I'm not sure what it takes to get involved in this and everything else, but there, there is an organization that actually does that out there. Now, what does all that mean? Now, most of these organizations tend to stutter and have problems when you ask them to prove their uh, worth, and they wanted to prove their worth. They wanted to come out and say that, look, I've just made $10 million and done this psychically. This gives psychic power a validity because it worked in the real world. Now, they have not done this. So even though they claim great profit. So I don't know. I don't know. The, you know life is not so straight forward and simple. But a lot of the people out there that you think have um, been wealthy by just their businesses and other things, uh, hire psychics, hire magicians to work for them, and they're empowering their businesses, which gives them a huge edge in life. Now, you must remember, and again, your edge, it's always easier to increase someone who's doing okay to doing great. If you're starting out from the ground up, it's very difficult to build your business to begin with. So a lot of energy and years of work has to be done by some practitioner and the use of equipment. So this is the one problem um, uh, that comes with everything. So if you're a startup business, having it empowered is very important, but it's not a quick, simple thing. And, you know, I work with somebody who thought that this was Harry Potter time and that, you know, you were going to empower his startup business, which really had great trouble um, uh, with verbalizing and attracting people, didn't have a good sales speech, didn't have a good website, didn't have good anything, uh, but wanted to do this. But, you know, all this takes years to develop. And, of course, the energies uh, required to make you successful have to build up as well. So you start from zero with no interest, and people are under the impression that you're going to be turned into a millionaire. Now, anybody that can do that certainly wouldn't be selling their services to you. So a very dependent on other things. So it's all about keeping an energy flow around a person. Uh, if you want success, you keep a magnetic energy field around yourself. And um, that's what you do to draw in those energies, which are very fleeting when it comes to business and success energies. You do the same thing with well-being, with protection, etc. And it all works and gives you that fantastic edge you'll get nowhere else. But nothing is a miracle. And if I always am testing and searching out people that have that, but I've yet to see any great uh, results from anybody. So the bottom line is that everybody assists people. But the whole idea is you're not going to take something from nothing and make it in a short period of time into something else. If someone was able to do that, they would be doing it for themselves, etc. But it's not that person's empowerment problem. It's the fact that you know, there's just no energy with the startup business. Are you advertising? What are you empowering? Well, no, you're empowering me. I, I, got, a, I got a couple of YouTube uh, videos I did. Uh, well, that's not good enough. So you're going to have to do traditional stuff. Do you have ads going? Do you have support? Are you presenting your situation? You cannot sell a bad product to someone just because you empower it. Yeah, you'll help the sales, but that's not going to make you successful. You can't take something that's bad or poorly put together and make it into success with using empowerment alone. So everything has to play a point. Now, you can have the best product in the world. It can be advertised everywhere, and huge corporations have done this, and they've lost hundreds of millions of dollars. Their products fail because the products, all the key elements were there, but there were no empowerment energies. There was no good vibe to the product, and as such, people just discarded the professional, well-done advertising, etc. It was just thrown away because of that. So... All of this is part of the process. All of this is the interesting factors of this kind of technology in general. And of course, it's very broad now. You got to remember that Abrams and Drown, as far as I know, were never using this for anything metaphysically or financially based. It was strictly used as a well being program. And he claimed a lot of success with it, as did Ruth Drown. And there are many people that have come forward and say that Ruth Drown, particularly in England when she went over there, um, healed her, healed them of, uh, she healed them of uh, different illnesses. So all of this is so fascinating, so exciting uh, that we have to uh, give it serious thought. 
uh, De La War in England uh, was persecuted as well. And uh, the story goes that uh, he cured the judge's wife of a very serious illness. So obviously uh, he was not convicted, but he, w he went, I think they went after him again. It seems to be the way things are done. But he was able to cure people, even though he apparently didn't make any claims or anything else, but was able to do this even with the judge. So certainly there is no 